Yes, I brought the secrets back with me. And here they are. The big secret is, of course, oil, which has brought a better life to all the people in the USA. But the key to making oil work for everybody is competition. I try to get away from, from what we can call sort of historical chauvinism. We are not necessarily better because this is the 21st century and, and, and that was the 1950s. Our job is to understand the past as it was. The best short films for lifelong learning recommended by teachers for teachers. This is Short Films Teachers Love with your host, Richard Lee. There, there's a value in students understanding that part of part of comprehending history and part of analyzing history is understanding the viewpoint of those who create historical narratives. So somebody produces or writes a film, they uh, they have a particular viewpoint, they have a particular agenda, and I don't mean that in a pejorative way, but everybody has a sort of agenda for what they want that uh, that that examination to accomplish. So there's multiple lenses through which students can examine um, well, anything really that uh, that has to do with history. And uh, as I tell my students, the great thing about history is absolutely everything has a history. So no matter what you're interested in, you can find something in history that that you can you can it, if not get passionate about, at least cope with well enough to get through the term. What's in really interesting about the films that you're finding is that they are actually primary sources in themselves. You know, they yes. they're not just something to an idea about what history was like they were actually made at that period of time and i want to start with this one called i've called it oil companies and competition but it's not it's called destination earth destination earth yes seeing moving lights in the distance i headed for them what phenomenal luck i had landed close to what seemed to be an endless procession of state limousines they moved quickly and yet with fantastic smoothness. I just had to get a closer look at one of those Earth mobiles. Just as I thought, not only smooth and efficient, but powerful as well. Students can watch this and they can see that there are many layers to this. There's the layer of, haha, funny cartoon. There's the layer of, well, this is an ideological piece, you know, contrasting American Western style capitalism and, uh, and, and free markets to Soviet style planned economies. And then there's also the, the little piece that, that sometimes escapes students notice, which is the whole, um, the whole topic of sponsorship, who pays for these things to be made. And in this case, it's uh, it's a trade organization that represents, uh, represents oil companies. So what, what the oil companies are doing in Destination Earth is really sort of equating the oil industry with capitalism and America, almost trying to make them inseparable. So you can't have capitalism without oil, and you can't have oil without capitalism. And without either of these things, we're all living in Mr. Ogg's world of no products on the shelves and nowhere to eat, and everybody's unhappy. So there's there's little layers to uh, to drill drill down, and it's a it's a fun little cartoon. It's great. It's actually it's really well produced. In fact, I showed my kids, mm -hmm. and they said, "Oh, that's like the Jetsons." But the Jetsons didn't come until like the 60s or 70s. So it was 60s. Yeah. yeah. So it was it was very uh, it was very ahead of its time in a way. Let's look at another one that is is a lot more talky. So the the one called Brink of Disaster. See, our enemies, headed and masterminded by worldwide communists, they found out that they can't destroy us from without until first they weaken us from within. And John, they think they can do it. They have every reason to think so. Historian Arnold Toynbee points out that's how 19 out of 21 nations have gone down the drain before us. Internal decay. The breakdown of moral, ethical, and religious principles. That's what I tried to tell him. The ragtags have to deny God, because as long as people believe in God and his laws of decency, then they won't go along with what these lowlives want to do. 
what really struck me from the start, and, and again, it's this opportunity we have to see something in a different context, and it suddenly highlights how it's different now. And, and that's the open connection between the religious and the political language. Regardless of where you sit on those topics, the fact that all that language is being used about, you know, respect for God and, you know, in the same breath as, you know, this is the way the world is, is just not something you would do today. Tell me about how you came across this and, and why it's of interest to you. Uh, what's interesting about this film and the reason why it is like it is, is that it was created by a, an organization called the National Education Project, which was run out of a Christian college called Harding College in Arkansas. And the people behind this organization had been working for 30 years at this point, promoting their vision, and it was very much a right-of-center, uh, conservative, pro-capitalism vision of what America should be. They made dozens and dozens of films. Uh, that company uh, or that outfit, they made another film that you can find on archive.org called Perversion for Profit. And uh, it, it sort of goes after, um, goes after the, uh, the pornography industry, which, uh, which has existed about as long as humans, mm -hmm. I think. <laughs> but uh, they, they sort of look at the pornography industry. And interestingly, they connect it all to communism. Yes. It, it, it's, it's all communism, which, <laughs> it, uh, you know, being a, a child of, you know, I was in high school when the Cold War ended. And, and so I, I sort of was there for the, the switch over to the post-Cold War world. It really undermines your message about pornography and sexual exploitation if you just blame the communists for everything. Yes. So just just while we while we're going through these films, let's let's talk about the the third one that you've recommended. And that's called a challenge to democracy. Evacuation. More than a hundred thousand men, women, and children, all of Japanese ancestry, removed from their homes in the Pacific Coast state to wartime communities established in out of the way places. Their evacuation did not imply individual disloyalty, but was ordered to reduce a military hazard at a time when danger of invasion was great. Two-thirds of the evacuees are American citizens by right of birth. The rest are their Japanese-born parents and grandparents. So what are not Challenge to Democracy does is it sort of shows life in the internment camps, and um, as my students said the other week when we saw it, it's very sanitized. It's these, these are clean camps, they're nice, they're fun, boys get to join the scouts. Um, when you get old enough, you, you volunteer to go fight on behalf of the country that took your family away and put them in a camp, um, and they're all happy to do it. Um, but what it also does, and it, it's in 44, so it's near the end of the war, what it also does is it makes very clear that the, at least the people making the film – recognize that they they recognize that this is a bad thing and when you look at the background to internment a lot of the documentation the reports what's clear is that there were many people in the war department telling president roosevelt we don't need to do this there is not a threat from japanese americans there really isn't. If anything, this might make them less sympathetic to the war effort. Mm. How much do you spend your time in classroom thinking, reflecting on that was how it was then, this is and comparing that with this is how it is now, or or is history try to contain itself to to the past? I try to contain it to the past, um, just because it's so it's so difficult to get students to. To look at things more deeply than just a compare than than just a weren't weren't wasn't everybody stupid back then? Yes. Or wasn't everybody why 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 were they, why was everybody a racist back mm. in you know 1944? Mm. I I try to get away from from what we can call sort of historical chauvinism. Um, we are not necessarily better because this is the 21st century and 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 that was the 1950s. We are different, and our grandchildren are going to see the media we create and be shocked and appalled at at the the biases and viewpoints that are that will no longer be acceptable in in 30 years. Our job is to understand the past as it was. We can't completely divorce ourselves from our own viewpoint because there, there's no way to do that. You can't be completely objective about things, but you can look at things within their own context. 
And emphasizing that helps reinforce, so what's the context of this? What's going on in the war? Why are we doing the internment of the Japanese Americans? Why is everybody sort of harping on capitalism as being being crucial and valuable? What's going on geopolitically? What's going on politically within the country? The films or other historical documents need to explain the history of the time, but they also need to reinforce the importance of understanding the history of that time. I urge people to go watch a bunch of this stuff. It's it's fun. It's fun to make fun of. And for for my, my fellow teachers out there, it's a new and different way to engage your students with the past, especially for younger students, a way to get them involved in studying historical documents and primary sources, even if they might not have the reading skills to cope with you know, a lengthy newspaper article about the dangers of juvenile delinquency. They're short. Try one. If it bombs, you don't have to try it again. But um, it, it can be uh, sort of another, another tool in the toolbox. To listen to the full conversation, join us on SoundCloud, iTunes or Stitcher. For extra notes and community support, join our Facebook group today. This show is a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. Podcasts for educators, podcasts by educators. To learn more, visit edupodcastnetwork.com. Oh, and don't forget to check out Aaron's book, Teaching History with Newsreels and Public Service Shorts. Or explore the collection of over 6,000 free public domain shorts available from the Prelinger Archives. All links in the description below. (laughs) 